Hey friends, how's it going? Welcome back. Today we are turning some hedgerow fruit into some hedgerow booze. This makes it the perfect Christmas present and hopefully you're going to be watching this video in time to be able to lay down some of these bottles to give out to your friends and family this Christmas. Fingers crossed. So when the berry grows on the plant, you've got the stalk coming out of this end. And then if you flip it over on the opposite end, it's, this is where the flower grew. Now you just get a little tiny paring knife in there and slice that bit off. This bit goes into the compost and this bit goes into your bottle with your gin. The reason you take this off, and please don't think you have to do this. And to be honest, if I was making this Hawthorne gin for myself, honestly, I'd be leaving that bit in because I'm lazy. Uh, but because I'm doing it for gifts, it's going to give the alcohol a much clearer finish. So you're actually going to be able to see through it as opposed to it being a bit cloudy and a bit bitty. So don't have to do it. Don't worry if you don't. But because I'm doing it for gifts, I'm going the extra mile. nearly two hours just to sort that many whores out that is a pretty full-on job my hands are filthy they're all over the floor I've got mess everywhere um, and honestly and honestly from now on if anyone wants a bottle of this Hawthorne gin for a Christmas present then they're going to be getting a cloudy one because that was not fun so now we've done the Hawthorns Thankfully, what we need to do next is the slows. Now this is gonna be a much quicker process because these are such bigger berries. And for the slows, you're just gonna stab them with the tip of a knife or traditionally you'd have used a darning needle for this, but seeing as I already had the knife out and it was already mucky, I figured, do you know what? Let's just stab them. <laughs> so the reason that you do this is to so that the alcohol can get inside the fruit and it can drag out the color and the flavor of these slows and make your slow gin as beautiful as it can be. So there we go. Now I'm gonna pile those into another glass jar. Perfect. Now I'm gonna get this bit cleaned up and then we're gonna add in the gin and the sugar. So I'll be back in a mo. Next up, pour your sugar in on top of the fruit. And as always, you can find the full recipe down below in the description box. Next up, pour over your gin. And you don't have to buy fancy gins for this, just a cheap supermarket brand will be absolutely fine. Take it quite close to the top, but not right the way up. We are gonna to top those back up though, don't worry. And then you're just gonna give them a really good stir, or you can close the lids and give them a good shake if that's what you prefer to do. And this is just to get that sugar starting to dissolve down. And already the colour is leaking out of these slows. It's already turned the gin purple. It's so pretty. And once you've given it a good stir, then you can top it up with more gin. And then set this somewhere dark and cool for these berries to work their magic into the liquor. And there we have it. These guys are ready to go and pop in my pantry. And then in, what are we now? We're mid-October. So I'm thinking probably mid-December, I'm gonna strain this off through a sieve lined with some muslin over a nice big clean mixing bowl. And I'm gonna just slowly let all the alcohol filter through. Don't squish and squash with a spoon because then that's gonna make your alcohol cloudy and that's what we've spent all that time trying to avoid. So just let it sit there overnight and it will just slowly drip through. And then you can take that alcohol that's in the bowl and bottle it up. And then you've got some lovely homemade Christmas gifts for people. There's plenty of other fruits in our hedges or even our farmer's markets that you can make a whole range of different flavours. I've made wild booze with strawberries, with elderberries, with blackberries, obviously. There's so much fruit out there that you can do this with. So have a play around. And if you find any new favourite flavours, please let us know in the comments below. 
So I really hope you've enjoyed this and I do hope that you make some of your own Christmas presents this year. It's such a fun gift to make, apart from the topping and tailing, let's be honest. But it's such a lovely gift to receive as well because a homemade gift really does beat anything you can buy at the stores. So as always, thank you for joining me in this video. Please let me know in the comments below if you give this one a go. And if you try any new flavours, please let us know those too. Here's wishing you all a fabulous week ahead and a wonderful weekend, whatever you're up to. And I'll catch up with you on the other side. Until then, see ya.